the ocean, an underwater habitat. From freezing seas with icebergs to waters as warm as a bath, the ocean is home to the greatest diversity of life on Earth. Take a deep breath. We're going in. Sea creatures look very different from land animals. Different body shapes. Different features. They move through water much thicker than air. Animals have lived here for millions of years, developing special adaptations to thrive in an underwater world. For breathing, and swimming. Food is all around. You might not see it, but in just one teaspoon of ocean, there are thousands of minute plants, tiny eggs and larvae. Like seeds waiting for spring, they gradually grow. Our oceans were formed around 3.2 billion years ago and cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. They produce around 70 to 80% of the oxygen we breathe. The oceans harbor 99% of all living space on Earth and have enough water to fill a bathtub that's 685 miles long on each side. of our Earth is covered by oceans. There are five oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic. Within our oceans live thousands of plants and animals. Many of them haven't even been discovered yet. The deepest parts of the ocean have little or no plant life. That's because the energy from the sun cannot reach deep into the ocean, and plants need sunlight to survive. However, there is an abundance of plant life or seaweed wherever the sun can reach. Sea turtles and saltwater crocodiles, marine iguanas, and polar bears depend on the ocean for their food. There are also many seabirds that rely on the ocean for survival, including penguins, pelicans, tern, albatross, puffins, gulls, and others. Not all these animals birds and plants live in or near the same oceans. Some of the oceans are very cold with parts covered in ice, while others are warm. Thank you. 
The Pacific Ocean is located between North and South America and Asia and Australia. It is the largest ocean in the world. If we combine all the land on Earth, the Pacific Ocean would still be bigger. It is also the deepest of all oceans. It is 36,000 feet deep. In the Pacific Ocean, near China, there's a long crescent-shaped area that's one of the most special places on Earth. It's called the Mariana Trench, and it's the deepest part of the ocean. It's so far down that for a long time, scientists weren't even sure if anything could live there. But then we finally were able to explore it, and it turns out that there are some awesome forms of life down there. The Mariana Trench is almost 11,000 meters, or about 36,000 feet deep. It's hard to even imagine Imagine how far down that is, but think about how far you would go if you walked for two hours, like for as long as a movie. Yeah, that would be a really long walk, but you'd end up going pretty far, right? Yeah, well, that's about as far down as the deepest part of the ocean is. If you put the biggest mountain on Earth inside it, the top of the mountain wouldn't even come close to the surface of the water. And when you get that deep into the ocean, it becomes really hard for anything to survive. For one thing, it's super dark. The light from the sun can't go through all that water, and almost everything that's alive needs sunlight to live, so it's really important. It's also really cold. It's so cold that if it got even a tiny bit colder, the water would freeze into ice. And there's tons of pressure down there too. Pressure is what happens when something pushes on something else. Like if I press my hands against this table, my hands are putting pressure on the table. At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, all the water above creates lots of pressure, so much that it wouldn't be safe for people or almost any other living thing to swim around down there. The pressure would be way too strong. Between the darkness and the cold and the pressure, it's very hard for anything to survive at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But there are some special types of life that can, like something called a sea cucumber. No, not that kind of cucumber, Squeaks. Even though they have a similar name, sea cucumbers aren't anything like the cucumber fruit we eat in salads sometimes. They're animals. They kind of look like big worms, and they live on the ocean floor, where they look for things to eat, like tiny animals, so small you wouldn't even be able to see them. Another type of animal that lives in the deepest part of the ocean are amphipods, which look a little bit like shrimp. Most of the animals that are similar to amphipods and live in other places are pretty small. They usually only get about a centimeter long or about as long as a fingernail. But the amphipods at the bottom of the Mariana Trench are much bigger. They can be 20 centimeters long, or about the size of a grown-up's hand. There are also lots of another type of living thing, called foraminifera, or just forams for short, that live in the deepest part of the ocean. There are more than 400 kinds of them living in the Mariana Trench. And they're not animals or plants or even fungi like mushrooms. They're a type of living thing called a protist. These forams can be about the same size as the amphipods, or even bigger, up to 30 centimeters long. All the types of life in the deepest part of the ocean are soft with no hard bones. They can't have bones because the pressure down there is so strong that it would just turn them into mush. That strong pressure also makes it very hard for us humans to go explore the Mariana Trench, which is why there's a lot scientists still don't know about it. We can send people down there in special types of submarines that keep them safe from the pressure and the cold, or we can send robots without people. I know, Squeaks, I would love to go exploring there too. But it's very hard and expensive to build submarines or robots that can go that far down. Scientists have only done it a few times. So we know a little bit about what's down in the deepest part of the ocean, but a lot of it is still a big mystery. The ocean is really, really deep. Deeper, in fact, than most of us realize. If you were to shave off all of the land from the tops of every continent and island in the world and fill up the ocean's deepest points with that land, then the entire Earth would be covered in an ocean two miles deep. 
Three-fourths of our planet is already covered in water, though, and it goes a lot deeper than just two miles. Let's start with a sense of scale. This dot right here is the size of an average human. This slightly larger dot is the size of an elephant, and this is the size of the largest ship ever built, the Nok Nevis. With that in mind, let's start going underwater and see what we find out. The first milestone is at 40 meters below the surface, which is the maximum depth allowed for recreational scuba diving. For scale, here's a human, and here's a blue whale, the largest animal on Earth. Blue whales usually hunt at depths of around 330 feet within the well-lit zone of the ocean. A little further down at 93 meters is where the wreck of the Lusitania was discovered, which is interesting because the Lusitania itself is 240 meters long, which means that it sank in water shallower than it is long, so if the ship was standing on its stern or bow, it would be sticking out of the water. Just deeper down, at 700 feet, the USS Triton became the first submarine to circumnavigate the Earth in 1960. It's been said that 95% of all the waters in the world remain unexplored. The deepest parts of the ocean especially are a challenge to unravel, as they pose a lot of biological and engineering challenges just to get there. As such, almost anything that comes out of its dark depths always look bizarre, almost alien to us. Crabs are also subjected to the same freakish transformations when the deep sea is taken into account. This time though, it's not just their size, but rather a whole different dimension of weird. Japanese spider crabs, for example, don't just hold the record for the longest-legged crab, but they are also literally the longest-legged arthropods ever. They can grow up to around 5 meters long. Although their body is relatively small, its main body can still grow a bit larger than the average human head. At 831 feet, we reach the deepest free dive in recorded history. Down here, the pressure is 26 times greater than at the surface. Named Herbert Nitsch to accomplish the free diving world record at a depth of 214 meters. This guy swam down to this level with just one single breath. A little further down at 332 meters, we have the scuba diving world record, which was accomplished by another man named Ahmed Gaber. If he had swam down another 111 meters, then he would have reached the height of the Empire State Building if it was submerged underwater. And a little further than that, at 500 meters below the surface, we arrive at the maximum dive depth of blue whales, the largest creatures on the planet and also the limit of the U.S. Seawolf-class nuclear submarine. At 535 meters, we can witness the maximum dive depth of Emperor Penguins, and this is when we must bring up the intensity of water pressure. At this level below the surface, the water pressure exerted on a person or the penguins would be roughly equivalent to a polar bear standing on a quarter. 2,722 feet down is where the tip of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, would reach. A little farther, at 3,280 feet, we're deep enough that sunlight can't reach us. We've now entered the Midnight Zone. Many animals down here can't see, like these eyeless shrimp at 7,500 feet who thrive near scalding, hot underwater volcanoes. At this depth, temperatures are just a few degrees above freezing, but the waters around hydrothermal vents can heat up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. At 280 meters, we reach the maximum depth dived to by the leatherback sea turtle, and further down at 1,828 meters, we would reach the deepest part of the Grand Canyon were it to be underwater with us. The sea toad is a rather simple name for this ocean-dwelling oddity, but it does kind of describe what an amphibian might look like when subjected to the crushing depths of the deep sea. Think of a fish that is smashed from front to back and given tiny legs. That's the simplest description of what sea toads look like. In the words of Sir David Attenborough, it has been living so long in the depths that its fins have changed into something more useful, feet. Not the most beautiful thing in the sea, but it definitely gives a direct visual representation of what we humans would definitely find familiar, yet otherworldly. Oh, and as with its close relative, the aforementioned anglerfish, the sea toad is also a fierce ambush predator. It lurks, always patiently waiting, before its hapless victim finally ends up as sustenance. Chances are you can't look any more miserable than this deep sea creature. Meet the blobfish. It's got a pretty good reason to look so bummed. It's been called the world's ugliest animal, which really isn't a nice thing to say. I mean, it might not be as cute as a panda or a kitten, but the blobfish's funny looking body actually helps it to survive in its harsh underwater environment. The blobfish lives in the ocean off the coast of Australia, and it lives really, really deep. How deep? 
almost at the seafloor. That's nearly 10 times deeper than where most ocean animals live. Not many animals could survive where the blobfish lives. Down there, it's pitch black because sunlight can't even reach that far. The temperature is just a few degrees above freezing and the pressure is extremely high. So what's this pressure we're talking about? Well, if you're at the bottom of the ocean, the weight of all the water on top of you presses down really hard and it squeezes you like a really, really tight bear hug. So how does the blobfish survive with all this intense pressure? Well, that's where it's ugliness is actually a plus. The blobfish has a gooey jelly-like body that can handle the squeezing from all of that underwater pressure. In fact, it has almost no muscle and very few bones. It's almost pure squish. But it's still able to do things like move and eat because its blobbiness makes it buoyant. And this means it can just float comfortably right above the ocean floor without having to use too much energy to swim. And it mostly just swallows food that happens to float on by which I have to admit would be pretty neat. Could you imagine cheeseburgers just floating into your mouth? So the blobfish is blobby for a lot of good reasons. And to its underwater friends, it probably doesn't look so ugly at all. Scientists actually think that when it's at home on the ocean floor, the blobfish probably looks a lot more like other fish that we know. And that's because the pressure at the bottom of the ocean squeezes its body into that shape. But most of the blobfish that we've seen have been caught by fishing nets and brought up and out of the ocean. And when a blobfish is taken away from the pressure that gives its body that shape, well, it looks blobbier than usual. So is the blobfish really ugly? Well, maybe to some people. Is it awesome? Definite. Down at 2,000 meters, we start to encounter some of the more terrifying sea creatures, like the ominously named black dragonfish, a carnivorous beast with a stomach that doesn't allow light to be emitted through it. Meaning that since we're in total darkness underwater at this point, the only way you would ever see this thing is with a flashlight. A little further down, at 2,250 meters, we would reach the maximum depth dived to by both sperm whales and the very frightening colossal squid. The squids themselves can grow to be 14 meters long and weigh up to 750 kilograms with eyes the size of a dinner plate and razor-sharp sickles in the middle of their tentacles. So yeah, good luck with that down there. There's one persisting legend that turns out to be true of the deep. It's that the deep sea is home to fantastic creatures that exhibit monstrous proportions. It's a well-known scientific phenomenon known as deep sea gigantism. And one of the most gigantic creatures we know of that lives down there is the colossal squid. The colossal squid is a gigantic cephalopod that is easily more than twice the size of a regular human. Occasionally caught in the southern seas of the Antarctic, we've never seen one in its natural habitat as we've only known about them because they're sometimes caught by fishing rigs. It may not be capable of capsizing ships, but it's still the largest known invertebrate in the world. Giant squids are another huge squid species. Compared to the colossal squid, they're only about a third of their size, but they're still larger than any regular person, and they have a huge intimidating beak you would not want to be eaten by. Though it can be just as elusive as its bigger counterpart, the giant squid has actually been spotted in its natural habitat, even twice, although only very briefly. Speaking of deep sea squids, the vampire squid also deserves a special mention with a weird transitional body that is technically classified as a split between a squid and an octopus. It's not as gigantic, but it's still equally monstrous with its cape-like webbing. 9,816 feet is the deepest any mammal has been recorded swimming. The Cuvier beaked whale. But not even the Cuvier beaked whale could explore the RMS Titanic which rests at a staggering depth of 12,500 feet. The pressure is now 378 times greater than at the surface. Yet, you can still find sea life, like the fangtooth, hagfish, and dumbo octopus, the deepest living octopus on Earth. Octopuses are already strange creatures. They have eight separate dexterous tentacles, a very squishy, flexible body, nine brains, three hearts, and blue blood. They even have an intelligence level that rivals that of dolphins and orangutans. However, our regular tentacled friends actually look rather tame compared to their deep sea versions. Here are some of the strangest you'll find in the deep sea. Let's start off with the flapjack octopus, which certainly looks like something out of a Disney movie. They live between 200 to 1500 meters below the ocean and are mostly native to the eastern Pacific, with a few species scattered throughout the mid-Atlantic Ocean. 
With its tiny size, gelatinous body, almost adorable build, and eyes that just seem to sparkle with curiosity, it completely differentiates itself from the more grotesque and extended build of an ordinary octopus. Now take a flapjack octopus, make it more translucent, and give it a rounder body, and this is what you have. The informally named Casper octopus gets the inspiration, obviously, from its ghastly look. First found thousands of meters deep in the Hawaiian seas, they have been observed to lay their eggs on the stalk of dead sea sponges and then guard them to the death. Literally, they will wrap themselves around the sponge without leaving, without ever feeding, until they finally die. Now that's dedication. For another Disney reference, look no further than the Dumbo Octopus. As you may have already guessed, its nickname is derived from its ears, which are actually fins with a peculiar shape. Just like the Flapjack and the Casper Ghost Octopus, it also has a seemingly smaller build than the average octopus, which allows it to thrive at depths as deep as 7,000 meters below sea level. A bit past that, at 4,000 meters, we start to enter the abyssal zone of the ocean. Water pressure is at an astonishing 11,000 pounds per square inch down here, and there are numerous strange, almost alien-like creatures that inhabit these depths, such as the fangtooth, anglerfish, and viperfish. We can't talk about the deep sea without mentioning just about every super wide-jawed oddity that lurks down there. On the top of the list is none other than the anglerfish, which gets its name from its unusual hunting method, which involves luring prey close to its mouth using that weird luminescent appendage coming out of its head. Frightening fish is the viperfish, measuring around 60 centimeters or 23 inches in length. It's essentially an anglerfish made to look even more alien. Its fanged jaws can open wide to almost 90 degrees, and its similarly configured bioluminescent lure can invite shallower fish down to their instant doom. Down at 4,267 meters is the average depth of the ocean where you would normally expect to hit the floor, but there are parts of the ocean that go significantly deeper than even this. At 4,791 meters rests the wreckage of the battleship Bismarck sunk during World War II, and way down at 6,000 meters is the beginning of the Hadal Zone. At 20,000 feet is the Hadal Zone, an area designated for the ocean's deepest trenches, like the Mariana Trench. If you tipped Mount Everest into the Mariana Trench, its summit would reach down to 29,029 feet. Pressure down at these depths can become 1,100 times what you would experience way back on top at the surface, which is roughly equal to an elephant balancing on a postage stamp or a single person carrying the weight of 50 Boeing 747 jumbo jets. Down at these depths, you would be crushed immediately without any outside protection, but life still exists down here in various strange forms. At 6,500 meters, we reach the maximum depth that the DSV Alvin can dive to, a popular research submarine that helped to discover the Titanic. A bit further down from there, at 10,972 meters, and we reach the average flight altitude of a commercial airliner. So if you've ever looked out of a window while on a flight and looked down to the ground, that's a very good sense of how incredibly deep down into the abyss that we are- It doesn't compare to the two deepest crewed missions in history. In 2012, director James Cameron descended to 35,756 feet for the Deep Sea Challenger mission. But Cameron didn't quite break the record, which was set by oceanographer Jacques Picard and Lieutenant Don Walsh in 1960. Picard and Walsh descended to the lowest point on Earth, Challenger Deep, at a record 35,797 feet below the surface. When we hit 10,994 meters, we have hit the bottom of the known ocean called the Challenger Deep, right here on this map just about 300 kilometers southwest of Guam Island. However, it is believed that there are almost certainly even deeper parts of the ocean than this that just haven't been discovered yet. It wasn't until 1997, after all, that the Serena Deep was discovered with a depth of 10,732 meters, making it the second deepest known point in the ocean. It Since then, scientists have sent half a dozen unmanned submersibles to explore Challenger Deep, including Kaiko, which collected over 350 species off the seafloor between 1995 and 2003. But, scientists estimate there are potentially thousands of marine species we have yet to discover. Humans have explored an estimated 5 to 10% of Earth's oceans. We've only just begun to understand the deep, dark world that flows beneath us. 
We're looking at pictures of a coral reef, a rocky piece of ground in the ocean that's made of and home to animals called coral. I wonder if this is the Great Barrier Reef. That's the biggest coral reef in the entire world. It's in the ocean near the country of Australia. See these parts of the picture? Those are the coral. Oh, you're right, Squeaks. Coral looks a lot like plants, but they're not. Coral are small animals that make and live in a hard, rocky material. Instead of moving around like most animals, they attach to the rocks and stay there for the rest of their lives. That's why they might seem like plants at first, because plants don't move around either. One small part of a coral reef can have thousands of coral all living together. Millions of coral over thousands of years have made the Great Barrier Reef. This huge reef is about 2,300 kilometers long. That's so long that if you could drive along it in a car, it would take you almost an entire day and night. Like all coral reefs, the Great Barrier Reef is home to lots of other kinds of animals too, big and small. Take for example, the dugong. These big animals eat plants. Lots of plants. Dugongs spend their whole day looking for and grazing on the sea grasses that grow on coral reefs like the Great Barrier Reef. If the reef didn't exist, these gentle giants wouldn't have enough to eat. Other animals need the rocky coral reef so that they have a safe place to live, like moray eels. They might look fierce and dangerous, but they're really very shy. So they spend most of their time hiding in caves and spaces in the reef. <laughs> yes, Squeaks, just like you're hiding behind this desk. Other animals use the coral reef to hide in a different way, like the cuttlefish. Cuttlefish can change the color of their skin, so they look a lot like the coral reef. That helps the cuttlefish hide from other animals that want to eat them. The Great Barrier Reef is an important place for all these animals, and it's an important place for people too. The reef helps protect Australia from the strong waves that storms churn up from the water. We can also make some types of medicine using the plants and animals that live there. Everybody, yay! Yes, yes, yes.